game day tomorrow. And if you're a YouTube watcher, you'll know that my background looks a little bit different. That's because I am on Syracuse University's hallowed campus to take this one. And I'm here for the fan reactions and everything. So we're going to talk about this game. We're going to have a chat with Chadwick. All that on Locked On Syracuse starts right now. Our Locked On Syracuse, your daily podcast on the Syracuse Orange. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network. Your team every day. Matt Bonaparte, Owen Valentine with you on your Friday episode of Locked On Syracuse. Thanks for making Locked On Syracuse your first listen every day. We're free and available wherever you get podcasts. And today's episode is brought to you by Underdog. Sign up on underdogfantasy.com with the promo code Locked On and get your first deposit doubled up to $100. That's Updog, or or, excuse me, Underdog Fantasy. (laughs) (laughs) Look at that. I said Updog. Um, What's up, dog? Rifling start. Um, All right. Notre Dame in the Loud House tomorrow against the 6-1 Syracuse Orange. This is an exciting game before the year, the game that I think everybody circled in terms of home games uh, and the one that everybody and their uncle is going to be coming to. Second home game in a row that Syracuse has sold out now, which is very exciting. Um, And this is a Notre Dame team, like we talked about yesterday, Owen, that despite some Despite lack of expected success this season, they're still a pretty solid team. Oh, yeah. I mean, you can't look past this team in terms of their ability and the skill level that they have. Are they 4-3? and three? Yes, that is the case. We're well aware of that. Do they have two bad losses? Yes, we're well aware of that. Is this still a very talented football team, a very capable football team? 100%. So although you can take the look, and see the record and understand that this is a much easier game than anticipated, right? We're talking in the preseason, they were what, five or six in the preseason rankings. Now you, you have a different team. It is not as good of a team as anticipated, but that is not to say that this isn't a good team. That is not to say that this isn't a team that can beat you. And this is not to say that this isn't a team that could knock your socks off in the dome. If you come out there flat footed and not ready to play this football game. Now I'm about to put, us both on the spot like nobody's business. Are you ready for this? Are you going to ask me for a prediction right now? No. Um, every week or so, we usually give a thing that we want to see and a question that we have for this game. And Lovely. this episode, we didn't talk about it before. So you're going to get them right off the cuff. And luckily for you, Owen, as you, I see you pulling something up over there, <laughs> I will oh, no. go first. Oh, I can go first. I was just oh, going to say this to? is going to be great because I I won't forget it because I have yes, nothing I'm to remember write it down at this anyway, point. Though. Okay, you can go you first as you go. No, no, you go. What you are go. we starting with? So Question gentle. or what we want to see? What, uh, what you want to see? What we want to see? I want to see. Ooh, I'm going to go crowd wise. I want to see three caused false starts from Notre Dame because the dome is that nutty. And the dome is that loud and the energy is that chaotic. And I know this is such an awful take in terms of football content, but that is the wrong ad, is it? What? Is that the right pop-up? I'm going on a tangent. My my screen is lagging. You're good. You keep doing you. You keep doing you. My thing, I understand that's not a there we go. The first one said the big three show out. At least on my side. Maybe I did something wrong. Just keep going. We'll keep going. We chug through. We power through just like Syracuse football. You're going to need this place to be going crazy. I'm excited for back-to-back sold-out crowds. And I think this game, right, NC State had some excitement. I think this game can have even more excitement because of who Notre Dame is. And you don't get opportunities to play Notre Dame in the Dome all too often, right? I think I botched the last time I came on here, and I said that it has been only what? six years since Notre Dame. I I think it's been a very long time since Syracuse has played in the Dome. It has been, or since Syracuse and Notre Dame have played in the Dome. This is something you don't see. And to have an opportunity to beat a very talented Notre Dame team 
is worth going nuts for in the stands. And I think that you are going to continue seeing the success that the Dome has brought this year and the chaos that a sold-out facility can bring on opposing teams because you've seen it already, and I think you will continue to see it against Notre Dame today or on Saturday. I like that from you. I'm going to go player-wise. Look at us. We work so well together. Um, I want to see Tucker go beast mode in this Love game. It. Okay, He's well-rested. Yeah, he's well rested, all right. Five carries last game, 10 touches on the football. Dino comes out in the press conference, says it was unacceptable. He's right. Uh, he didn't exactly say it was his fault. We don't know if it was, but he did say that the situation would be rectified. Um, in my mind, that means that Tucker's going to get the ball like 25 times this game, uh, and I really hope he does, and he just shows out for around 200 yards and a couple touchdowns. Obviously, those are lofty goals. I don't no necessary that'll get there, but I do want to see him go crazy on the Notre Dame defense. My original one was going to be that he uh, or, or that Syracuse just trounces Notre Dame because obviously everyone's talking about this being a close game, and I think it could be as well. Uh, but I really think it would be a, a huge statement for Syracuse to go out and beat an, an or a Notre Dame's team like this one so badly but i'm going to go tucker go beast mode because the other one's like obviously you want that so what's your question yeah my question is going to be what notre dame team shows up to syracuse new york this weekend we have seen two very different notre dame teams i mean i go back to week one they're playing ohio state they were beating ohio state at halftime they have played really good games of football uh the north carolina game they played a very solid game of football the byu game they played a very solid game of football but as we've also learned in a team that's four and three and underperforming, they have come out flat a handful of times. That Marshall game, the Cal game, the Stanford game, which Notre Dame football team shows up in the dome on Saturday is my big question. Uh, I expect it to be the better version of Notre Dame. I think there is enough on the line for them, enough to look forward to. I know in our YouTube comments yesterday, someone was asking what's on the line. They have no conference game or you know conference championship to play for. They have no college football playoff to play for. This is this is a morale thing. This is a you are Notre Dame football and you're not about to go 500 kind of deal. This is a you can salvage a season and build a lot moving forward. And it starts right here with a win against the top 20 Syracuse. There's a lot on the line for them. I expect them to come with their better team and their better performing squad. But that is very much a question for me because we have seen such drastically different Notre Dame squads in different games this season. Yeah, I think that's a totally fair question because Notre Dame, like we talked about in yesterday's podcast, has so much talent uh, and they can kill you, and it just is a matter of what team shows up. So I think that's a great question running into this one. For me, it is can Syracuse stay healthy for just one week? Please, just one week. Every week it seems that guys are going down. This guy's out for the season. That guy's out for the season. They've already lost Lockett, Thompson, and Elmore. Garrett Williams didn't play last week. Deuce Chestnut went went down at one point. We've seen Tucker go down a couple times this season, but luckily get back up. One week, can they just go clean slate? Everybody stays healthy. It's all okay. Um, I'm not necessarily going to blame the training department or anything like that, saying that it's their no. fault. Guys are getting hurt. It's football. Guys get banged up. But it just seems like the football gods have put it more on Syracuse than any other team. I mean, they just get hurt every single week. So I'm I think I tweeted that one week of just being healthy. I what think I think? tweeted that last week. The message has been received football gods. We get it. Yeah. You don't like the Syracuse defense. Stop Crazy. taking them out, please. All right. It's nonstop. We take a quick break on the other side. We bring on the wonderful Max Chadwick for a little chat about this game. He'll give us all the numbers that we need to know. There's a nice open. I like that from you, Owen. That's innovation that excites right there. Uh, okay. But first, let's talk about Underdog Fantasy. This episode is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy, the easiest place to spice up college football season for Syracuse. You could have taken Sean Tucker higher or lower than 93 and a half rushing yards. Clemson, of course, that defense, they, you would have hit on that if you took lower. Uh, or if you wanted to take Aronde Gatson higher than 66 and a half receiving yards in that game, that would have been a pretty good line. I don't really remember what he did. Those are the kinds of bets you can make at Underdog Fantasy. Sign up with the promo code 
Locked on, that's one word, and underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. It's easy to play, and it's available in over 30 states. Just pick between two and five players across any team and decide if they will finish higher or lower. It's one of the easiest to play fantasy games out there, and you can win cold, hard cash in a single game. Again, deposit $100, get $100 free. Go to underdogfantasy.com or find the Underdog Fantasy app in the App Store or Google Play Store. That's underdog fantasy promo code locked on. That's one word locked on. Get in on the college football pick 'em action today. Okay, Matt Bonaparte, Owen Valentine with you back on Locked On Syracuse. And now Max Chadwick from PFF back <laughs> with us for that. A chat with Chadwick. Max, thanks for coming once again. Thank you guys so much for having me. I know Bonesy had a new background right now. I have a new background. I literally just moved to Cincinnati uh, where PFF's offices are. So, uh, yeah, it's weird being by myself right now. I kind of miss having Owen as a roommate right now because I, I don't know what to do with myself by myself. So, so sweet. Few people say that. So I appreciate <laughs> it. I'm sure Mrs. Valentine is, is has very different uh, very different opinions than me. But, yeah, I, know, I, I could use some people in here right now because it's very lonely. So I'm, I'm grateful to you guys for having me on right now. Well, we're happy to have you, Max, at any time. Um, give us some numbers for this Notre Dame-Syracuse game. You get you told us in the chat, the chat with Chadwick, official chat earlier today, <laughs> that you had some good numbers. Let us know. What do you got? Yeah, I mean, guys, I mean, there's there's a lot of really good numbers I had today. One of them, I mean, to quote Han Solo from Star Wars, like, never tell me the odds. Uh, according to PFF's power rankings right now, Syracuse has a 1% chance to make the college football playoff, which – that's 17th in the country. <laughs> there, are, there are only 17 Love teams that. That, that even have a chance, according to our power rankings, to make the, to, to make the playoff. We're 17th out of those 17 teams. Um, yeah, 1%. So Syracuse fans, you know, the Clemson loss stings, yes. Uh, maybe the refs kind of helped out Clemson a little bit, just putting that out there. Um, but 1%. You know, they, they run the table. Who knows what happens? So 1%, hold on to that. Uh, Notre Dame, though, is a pretty good team. And I, I, I'm glad Owen brought that up. Uh, they're a lot better than the record indicates. You know, in, in PFS power rankings, they're 14th in our power rankings, which, again, look, they are they don't have a, a, a good record right now. But this is, the power rankings basically say, okay, on a neutral field, who will be favored? And Notre Dame is 14th in those power rankings. So, yeah, I, listen, I, I don't think Notre Dame is an amazing team or a top 10 team like they were in the preseason poll. But I do think that this is a team that you're going to want to like get up for. Like this isn't just some unranked team that you're playing against. Like Notre Dame is a legitimate team with legitimate players. One of those legitimate players has been their left tackle, Joe Alt. He has been the best offensive tackle or one of the best offensive tackles in the country. Right now is the highest graded offensive tackle in the Power Five, 90.6 grade. is an 89.2 run blocking grade, which is also highest in the country for offensive tackles. He is a superstar. He's only a sophomore too. This guy's another year of college football. He looks like a potential top five pick, top 10 pick in 2024. He is a stud. Uh, another stud on Notre Dame. I'm sure you guys know him already. Their tight end, Michael Mayer. Like he is, yeah. I mean, we talk all the time about Ronnie Gaston. Michael Mayer is awesome. Uh, he has the most catches for power five tight ends with 44 catches, has the most targets for power five tight ends with 67. He's been targeted on 31.5% of his routes, which is second highest among power five tight ends. He's currently the number 13 prospect on our 2023 NFL draft big board. So he looks like the top tight end in this upcoming draft and potentially a top 15 pick too. Like this guy has been a stud who Notre Dame has really relied on for three years now. And Syracuse is going to have to stop him. They're going to stop Notre Dame on Saturday. Uh, speaking of tight ends, though, going back to our guy, Aronda Gaston. They got to get some more Aronda Gaston on, on the feed because I love him. Um, still leads all tight ends in yards per route run with 3.12 yards per route run. The next highest tight end in the country is 2.73. So that's nearly like half a yard, which is a significant gap yeah, that Aronda Gaston's too. got. Yeah, that, that's a big gap for Aronda Gaston. So you talk a lot about Michael Mayer and how Notre Dame relies on him. Syracuse also really relies on Aronda Gaston for their passing game right now. Uh, Aronda Gaston also has 31 receiving first downs, which are the most in the country for tight ends. Uh, Syracuse quarterback Garrett Schrader right now the fifth tied for the fifth highest graded quarterback in the Power Five. He's a 90.6 grade. The guy he's actually tied with is Tennessee's Hendon Hooker, who has the second best Heisman odds right now. So 
Garrett yeah, I was about to say, who's way better. Yeah, <laughs> Hendon Hooker is killing it right now. And obviously, Tennessee, uh, top three team in the country. Obviously, they're, they're a bigger team than Syracuse, so he's going to get more love. But yeah, Garrett Schrader's efficiency wise is playing as well as some of the best quarterbacks in college football right now, which is a great sign for Syracuse. Uh, another guy, Garrett Williams. I know, I don't know if he's going to play this week. I know you guys probably know better than me. Uh, right now, our number 38 prospect on our updated draft board. So he is right on that fringe of first and second round for Syracuse, which, again, they haven't had a first-round prospect, a first-round pick in, I think, nine years. Justin Pugh, I'll Justin Pugh, yeah. 2013. So Garrett Williams has a shot, at least in our eyes. Uh, Notre Dame edge defender Isaiah Foskey, another guy to know on Notre Dame defense. Uh, he's the number 27 prospect in our big board. So right now we see him as a late first-round pick in this year's draft. So watch out for him. He's the edge defender for them. Uh, Notre Dame's offensive line is fantastic. It's got top 10 grades, both in pass protection and run blocking. Joe Alt obviously is a star of that unit, but they got stars all up and down that offensive line, especially at center. Uh, and Jared Patterson, who I believe is actually playing guard for them now, he has been a amazing for them. I, I believe he still hasn't allowed a sack in, in his entire career, and he's played for like four years. So he's got like 2,000 snaps, never allowed a sack. Like this guy is an absolute superstar in the interior for them. Uh, the final one I want to give out is for any betters out there. Uh, like I know, Owen, unfortunately, I'm in a, a legal state now in Ohio. So I'll have to see about this. But 2.1% is my my final uh, number I want to throw out there. Because on PFF, which you can find at pff.com, we do green line, which basically tells you the value of every bet you can think of, basically. Like this has a 8% value, which is like an amazing bet. Like, yeah, go put your entire mortgage on that. We recommend that if 2% or better for bets, bet that for college football. Like 2% or better is usually our standard, 1% or better for NFL. PFF Green Lines is a 2.1% edge on Syracuse minus 2.5. So if you're out there and you're thinking, hey, you know, who do I want, do I want to bet on this game? We recommend you bet on the orange minus 2.5. Um, right now our model sets the line at 3.3 points for Syracuse. So – if you're thinking about what bet to place, if you know if you want to have some action on the on the game as you watch it, we recommend Syracuse uh, with the points minus two and a half is the bet that we recommend this weekend. Owen, I'll give that to you. I don't know anything about betting, but you do. I I look anytime you tell me that there's an edge, uh, it's it's worth it, right? You got to have an yeah. edge. Love Listen, having an edge. people, Max Chadwick is your inside info, people. I'm <laughs> I'm just saying what. What more can we give you in terms of betting content? All right. Um, those are some good numbers. All I kept absorbing was, wow, their guys are really good. Yep, exactly. <laughs> that offensive exactly. line, man. I'm a yeah. little bit worried about the SU defensive line. They're all banged up. Okachukwu, or Okacheku, excuse me, it didn't seem like he played as much as Syracuse would have liked in the Clemson game. Kayvon Darton's going to play a lot. He was the walk-on who earned the scholarship. He's been solid. But the SU defensive line, who are crafty guys, undersized guys, fast guys, I don't know how they're going to line up against these boulders that Notre Dame has on the offensive line. I mean, you're telling me there, there are plenty of players who are the best or really, really solid at their position. Mm-hmm. I can't lie. I'm a tad bit worried about it. <laughs> Worthwhile. A very warranted panic. Do you have anything on Drew Pine, their quarterback? Yeah, Drew Pine. So he, he started off. Uh, I was looking at him too because I wanted to get some stats on him. And I, you know, he started off really bad. You know, when hey, the starter terrible. Tyler Buckner got hurt, and it was like, wow, like that that, that he's tanking their season right now because they have no shot. He's actually really improved down the stretch. Um, he's actually from Connecticut, which Owen and I's roommate Cooper Borman always talk about Drew Pine all the time. He's like, oh, I got to watch Drew Pine in person and all that. Um, yeah, he's been, he's been better. He's, has he been good? No, but like, I believe his grade, let me, I'll pull it up right now, but his grade, I believe was like in the high sixties, low seventies range. Um, let me just find it right now, but yeah, Max, he's when you like, pull that up, I've yes. got to expose bones for, oh, no. for having that same conversation yesterday. No, I did. did you? <laughs> I did. <laughs> did you watch him in high school? Well, I, our quarterback was better than him, but, you know, it was, he ended up going to Dartmouth. It's fine. I'm, and, uh, I'm over Taquan, it. Taquan Roberson, who was a Penn State backup, now I think the starter at UConn. That was another guy Cooper would also bring up. I don't like, know anything about him. He was like a, he I was do a know that kid. Owen did try to just nudge. If you're watching on YouTube, Owen tried to just point at me, but he pointed the wrong way. He went. <laughs> I, <know. laughs> I actually pointed at myself like, when all was said and done. Yeah. 
<laughs> uh, okay, I have it. So he is a 67.7 grade, which is 51st out of 71 Power 5 quarterbacks. So not great, but again, like the first few weeks, like he was down there with the worst of the worst. So he's improved for them. Uh, again, this is not their starter. Yet another backup quarterback Syracuse is going against. Like I hate to say that the Orange have been kind of lucky in how they've played this season and who they played this season. But they're not going to like to hear that, Max. They're <laughs> they're getting a lot of teams that are not their best. Let's just put it that way. Um, so that's how it always goes. I know. I don't and care. We're okay with that. I don't care. Okay with it. Listen, Syracuse <laughs> is not at their best either. We'll you guys play. Have... We'll play who shows up. All right. Exactly. You can't, Every... you can't get mad at us for winning. We no. play who they put on the field. Yeah. And you know what? Syracuse has a ton of injuries too. So I'm sure a lot of people will make the same argument. And say, hey, Syracuse is beat up too. Um, but yeah, yeah. So Drew Pine, obviously not their not their original starting quarterback because Tyler Buckner is out for the season. But he's been okay. You know, he's he's, he's improved at least because it. Again, that Marshall, he lost the Marshall game. The reason why they lost that game against Marshall was because Drew Pine was absolutely horrific. He had a 24.9 passing grade against Marshall, which That's is horrible. Not good. That is horrible. He's coming off actually his highest grade against UNLV at 84.5. So maybe he's a little hot right now, but again, not as bad as when he looked in his first game, but not great either. All right. Well, Max, we thank you for the numbers, and we will see you again next week but for now i cast you off that was our chat with chadwick now it's time for ads but that's only if you're a listener of this podcast not a watcher um we roll on here on locked on syracuse matt bonaparte Noah valentine with you it's time for predictions okay this one i think is going to be this has been the most difficult prediction for me to think of yet usually through the episode if anybody is interested i don't know if anybody is of how I think of my predictions. I don't know. I don't think of anything going in. And then during the podcast, I think of a number and I stick to it. I say that like my predictions have been spot on. I have gotten the team right most of the time. We are, by the way, even now since I picked Syracuse and you picked Clemson. I, but, I uh, hoped I would have preferred to be down two games. Well, we're both six and one. Um, would you like to go first or would you like me to go first? Give a key and a prediction. A key in this game, I am going to say, is to get Sean Tucker the ball early and often. Develop that run game. Let him do what he does. Notre Dame's run defense is a vulnerability in terms of what I've seen looking at them. Uh, and I, I think you've got to expose that, and you've got to do that through Sean getting the ball early. Uh, and then you can build with Schrader off of that. But I think you have to establish that run game from the get-go, uh, and that is going to put you in the best position to win this football game. In terms of prediction, what is the over under on this game? Is it? I, I want to say it was like forty eight last time I checked, um, but I have what's called a bad memory. Yes, it is forty eight. So good, great memory. memory stocks up for me. Um, so I am going to say, um, let's go. Ooh, I don't want to say the same score as last week, but I think I am. Do it. I'm going to say the final score of the Clemson game, uh, 27-21 in favor of Syracuse. Uh, yeah. Actually, I want to switch that. I don't want it to be exactly 48. That's a lame answer. Uh, I will use my same answer as, no, 24-17 Syracuse. 24-17, is that the final? That's yours? That's where you're going 24 with? points for Syracuse, 17 points for Notre Dame. And okay. I will tell you, Sean Tucker's got two scores on the ground, too. I'll throw a little cherry on top. I hope so. Okay. Uh, for me, the key in this game is to cover the tight end well. Syracuse has gotten burned by tight ends plenty so far this season. Uh, and Michael Mayer is easily the most talented one they've seen so far. Uh, and a guy Payne so Durham, close to the name, a guy so close to the name, Michael Myers, two days before Halloween. That's something spooky. to be concerned about. Yeah. Payne Durham inflicted pain in that Purdue game. Nine catches, 83 yards for two touchdowns in that Purdue game against Syracuse. It seemed like every time, every third down, he was open for a first down. Uh, so they can't let that happen. The linebacking core has got to pick him up. Somebody, Tony White's got to figure that out because Michael Mayer will uh, bury you. He's done it plenty of times this season against BYU, 16th in the country when they played. He had 11 catches for 118 yards and two touchdowns. Mayer is fantastic, and Syracuse has got to be game planning for him right now. 
In terms of a score prediction, I will go 31-21. Syracuse pulls it out. Two-score game. I say the Orange take care of business on the home field, and the fans help out, and Sean does definitely uh, inflate that score a little bit. So I've got a 10-point win for the Orange, 31-21. You've got a touchdown win, 24-17. We both have Syracuse winning. Let us know what you think in terms of score. Oh, before I leave, before we leave, uh, I wanted to shout out somebody who emailed us who also gave a prediction. This goes to Mike who said, love your podcast, keep up the great work. I rely on it to get out of bed and onto the laptop. Without it, thousands of authors would be without help. I'm a lawyer who represents writers, so no, you're doing a public service. This is a public wow. service podcast. He says, Q's 24, Notre Dame 21, let's go orange. I agree. I'm Matt Bonaparte. That's Owen Valentine. We will see you on Monday after what is hopefully a Syracuse victory.